Hi. Hi. Hi guys. Hi guys, I'm here today about to film a tutorial for you. I've had a lot of fun making my transformations for you, but the number one request is to do a full talk through tutorial for you. So I finally am at a place where I feel comfortable experimenting with the audio. I have no idea what I'm doing to sound like, by the way. I went out and got a microphone today. I tried it out, it didn't really work that well. Bear with me, it's a process, and you're along for the ride on this journey of figuring out how to make videos, and thank you for your patience. Major shout outs to all the YouTubers out there who dedicate their lives to creating content because it is not easy. It's a lot of trials and tribulations that go into it. And I have a newfound respect for all content creators on YouTube. I mean, holy shit. Good for you. Um, I thought it might be kind of fun to give you a full demonstration of what I've learned over the years on one side of my face and then maybe on the other side. Common drag queen makeup errors. I went on Instagram and asked you guys if that was something that you'd be into. And the poll was 66% doing a side by side. So, be like drag makeup is pretty much a very standard map that we all follow with a little bit of tweaking here and there to customize it to make it unique to ourselves. So this isn't really going to be like a super brand new thing, just little tweaks that you can do here and there to refine and polish up. I'm going to show you guys pretty much everything that I know from shaving to brow blocking to covering to color correction, highlight contouring, just my take on drag makeup. So. I did partner with Nivea um, for this video. Thank you guys so much. I've used Nivea products my entire life, so I was really, really excited when they reached out to me to partner for this, and I can't say thank you enough. They'll be using products from their new Maximum Hydration line. It's a two-step process. One is a body shaving stick that gives you a very nice lather, smells super fresh, very hydrating. The second step is the soothing aftershave lotion. Typically I'd have to use like a body buzzer all over my body and that's not cute because you're just kind of prickly all the time. So it's really exciting that I can actually use a razor and get my skin super, super smooth. Another thing you can try to do if you have really sensitive skin and you get razor burn and irritation is to go down to a single or a double bladed razor, which took me a while to figure out. I was always using the ones with like four or five blades and um, it was just completely tearing up my skin. So, there we go, Hi. Give that a try. Um, it definitely helped me, and thank you again. Oh my god, this fucking Dawson's Creek haircut that I gave myself is like wild. The 90s are back, thank god. I was born in 98, so I'm going to go shave, and I will be back to show you how to block your brows and do a little bit of skin prep. I am shaven. I know that skincare is not the most interesting part of this video, but I have to give you the spiel. The better that your skin looks underneath all of this makeup that you're wearing, the better your makeup is going to look, period. So it is important to take care of your skin, especially if you're going to be doing drag makeup. I absolutely have to follow a very strict skincare regimen when I'm doing a lot of drag because my skin is so acne prone. I always start by using my Clarisonic, which is pretty much the most amazing thing ever. I am going to be using the Cream Radiance from Lancome. Literally need like a pea size amount and it'll be so lathery, so amazing and rich and creamy on your skin. Nobody's skin is meant to wear drag makeup multiple times a week. It's honestly disgusting. If you looked at your skin underneath a magnifying glass doing makeup like multiple times a week and you're not taking proper care of your face. Oh my God, it looks like a goddamn dumpster. If you have time, put on a sheet mask. Come through in a mask, so. Oh, this one, <laughs> this actually smells like a pina colada, <laughs> which I wasn't expecting. Get fall into this. <laughs> At this point, we're gonna take off our mask. And I literally am not gonna wipe this off. I'm going to let that sit there. I'm just gonna act as like a great moisturizer and primer for your makeup. I want to use my glue stick to glue back my sideburns. People who are putting on a wig have like a short stubbly sideburn or like a short haircut and using gel works, but the hair can slip and I find using just a glue stick will really paste it in place and it won't move. 
now that I'm in HD, you're gonna see every single flaw in my face. Um, this little bitch is gonna be your best friend. Highly recommend her. You plug her right into your phone. <laughs> um, I'm using the Elmer's Purple Washable Glue. I always use the smaller one because no point in having a big giant stick that's just putting glue unnecessarily all over this, your face around your eyebrow. So you only need glue where your hair is. A lot of people like to rub the glue all back and forth and get it in between all the hairs and then flatten it out. But for me, it works the best just to put it directly on like this. It makes my brows flatter than when I put glue all up in between and I don't know, there's always just a little bit more texture when I do it that way. So be super patient with your gluing process because you need to have a really nice foundation to work with. And if you try to rush gluing down your thick ass boy eyebrows, there's always gonna be texture and it's just never gonna work. While my eyebrows are drying, I take that time to slather on skin cream <laughs> because my skin texture is so rotted and rough I'm telling you, like, I will just sit here and create an entirely new layer of skin with primer. <laughs> this is our last step of glue, so you're gonna take a little bit of water, what's in this bowl, and swipe over the entire thing and feel for any texture at all and then just kind of flatten it with your finger. And this is gonna give you like the nicest, flattest texture ever. People like to put powder in between each layer and that just does not work for me. Like unless I have a ton of Botox in, I get way too creasy when I do that and it just doesn't work for me. So um, I like to do like four layers of just glue. And then after that, I will take a little bit of powder and just dust on a little bit to eliminate what like any tackiness that may be left over. But that is all the powder that I put on. So when I do my makeup, I always do the top of my face first. And then once my eyes are done, I move on to the lower half of my face. I feel like it's just a cleaner, more fresh like face if I do my bottom half last. So, so I'm just gonna start by using a beauty blender and a little bit of foundation to cover up the eyebrows. Just a couple pumps of that and just put this all over my forehead. So the next step is going to be creating brows and um, I'm going to map out my shape with a cream contour and for that I'll be using the Makeup Forever HD stick. What I like to do is look at my face shape and think about a nice eyebrow shape that is going to work for my face. It's really like the framing of how the rest of your makeup is gonna be done, so it's important to have like a really nice eyebrow shape. Just kind of start a little bit near where, a little bit above where my natural brow is, and just start working on the shape. So what I'm seeing drag queens doing is just slapping on a brow way too high and thinking, it's something like a this is like the right shape. And also creating a really blocky front or going in too close to the other side. You want to have like a fair amount of distance between your brows and I'm seeing a lot of brows coming really close together and creating like no space in between. It's not really like the look. And I'm gonna take my Krylon TV paint stick in white and carve up the brow, clean it up and make it look really nice with a nice bright white highlight on top. Another thing I'm seeing is people cutting out the tops of their brows and just leaving it. I'm seeing a lot of that. I'm not really understanding where that's coming from or why. It'll be a little bit this. Okay, so next we're gonna take a little translucent powder and a, and a beauty blender and pack that down. Give the brow a little bit of an ombre effect and take this like felted tip eyebrow marker from NYX 
and we want to use a much softer brow color no matter what color your wig is going to be. We'll be using the Oh How Do You palette, um, the Sugar Pill Trixie Mattel collaboration. Congratulations, y'all. So I'm just going to take a little bit of side saddle and blend out that ombre. <clears throat> and a pet peeve of mine is using a color that's way too dark and giving no dimension and giving me a blocky, non-shaped brow with a very blunted front here. Um, the way that I'm doing my makeup is pretty much the standard way of doing a very dramatic drag eye where you create a black liquid liner above your, cre your natural crease and drawing on a completely new eye shape. I do it this way because I have very hooded eyes and I think that it just works because it gives you a very good big drag stage eye versus having a very thin liner and like a shimmer shadow or something like that. Um, not many people can get away with that. You need to have like a very almondy eye with like lots of space in between in order for it to work. And I think that's why a lot of drag queens end up doing this method. So I have figured out a way to do a big dramatic drag eye without having a massive black blob of eyeliner. Um, I will make a tutorial on that very soon, but for today I'm just going to do it this way that I typically have been doing my drag makeup for like all of these years. So. so I just take the liner and create the shape that I want. Um, a few tips are to go a few centimeters above where your eye naturally ends, and this will give you an automatic lift in your eye, especially if you have a slightly droopier eye like I have. Another important part of doing your eyeliner is making sure that you give yourself a nice shape and definition on the inside corner. Um, if you leave it just at the point of where your natural eye ends, it doesn't really give your eye much shape when you're looking forward. So if you get a little bit tighter in there and create a nice little point, it will give your eye a much more like cattier shape, kind of like that. Take a little black shadow and pack that onto the black liner so that it doesn't start to crease or crack with your disgusting hooded, super extra skinned out eyelids. Just me? Okay. Right. The same liner and create a brand new lid. And I like to follow the same shape of my black liquid liner to create the new lid versus just throwing on any like curved shape for your crease. Do you see how there's like a perfectly even amount of space that goes all the way through and then it connects here at the tail. This will give it some uniformity. Is that a word? <laughs> It'll just make it look better. So I'm gonna take side saddle from Oh Honey and start to work on blending out this crease. I'm just gonna take a little bit of Pony Boy and blow out the black liner that created the new lid. We want like a nice blend here. I'm just gonna brighten up the lid space a little bit of the cream highlight, and then take a tiny brush and set it with a little bit of white powder. Okay, so this is a very standard basic drag eye for me. Um, you could change up the color, but um, this is pretty much just the basic top of the drag eye. And I'll move on to this side to show you kind of like what I am seeing on the interwebs. I'm seeing a lot of eyeliner just being put on without any like a real idea behind it. A crease will be painted on with a big thick eyebrow brush and some eyeshadow without any real thought behind what we're doing. Yes. I want to talk a little bit about color correction for beards. I'm seeing like all of this color correction happening on people's faces. Like 
we're painting our faces orange before we paint our faces with foundation. And I'm not really understanding why we are painting our faces orange or green or whatever the case may be that you're trying to correct. Like this is not necessary at all. The point is to neutralize the blue and what you're doing by putting on all of this color correction is creating the exact same issue except not blue but orange. So like this amount of my finger here is probably way more than what you actually need. Like we're really just trying to neutralize whatever blue is on your face. So I'm just gonna take a couple of pumps of foundation and put that all over. I feel like I need to put on an entire new layer on this side because it looks orange to me. So I'm going to add highlight, a cream highlight from Kryolan um, to this area here. And I mean, highlight is highlight. You can't really fuck it up if you put it on this general area. But um, what I do see a lot of queens doing is putting it all along their jaw. And for me, I don't really understand why drag queens highlight the shit out of their jaw like that. Like, we should contour our jaw and try to make it appear smaller, not really, like, bring it out. So I always just leave mine neutral and only highlight the areas that I actually want to see highlighted. Another thing that I want to talk about that people are going to probably call me completely insane on, but I don't really understand why we contour, cream contour our face so severely. A lot of men's faces have really deep bone structure and our like prominent bone structure and I don't really understand why with the point in taking brown cream and emphasizing their already very cavernous cheekbones and like like deep foreheads and shit. People think that their forehead is too big so they want to contour it down like this but you don't realize that you're putting on a wig with a whole new hairline. So we don't really need to be contouring this forehead so severely. My neighbors are screaming at each other. It's their nightly tradition they love to do. So anyway, I just do a highlight. Tell him, bitch. You tell that fucking man. For me, I just like to do this much in cream and then set it and then do like a little bit of um, contouring the powder, but I don't like to do a ton of cream contour for me. But I'm seeing a lot of people just really going for it. <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna set all this with translucent powder. Now to do, I like to do just a little bit of contouring, um, mostly just to bring color back into my face, not really to carve anything out. I've realized that putting on like a nice highlight and then using my natural features just looks a lot better than trying to take a brown powder and create new shapes. So I like to use a slightly, slightly deeper color. This one's from NYX. Um, and just give myself a little bit of a definition. It's not really about trying to like restructure anything. I'm talking like one or two shades darker, not three or four. But you know, this works for my face. You know, so like I think cream contour is great if you have a big face to work with. But a lot of men's faces are really small and cavernous. And adding much of brown to it just doesn't help. It needs to be bright and lit up and, you know, with color, not really like dark, ashy brownness everywhere. Then you put on like a big old wig. It's just not sparkling and clean and shiny looking, so. When you do something really light like this, you really don't have to spend a ton of time blending it out because it matches your skin enough. I'm going to take some contour and really work it. What I see drag queens doing is taking contour and just carving off like these areas of their faces without really realizing that it looks really nice if it just stays nice and bright. Do a little bit of super white um, powder from Ben Nye, a little bit to my under eye here, a little bit to the top of my forehead, upper lip, and a little bit 
under my jaw because it's not going to be very intense at all once I wipe it away just to keep all the colors uniform all over my face. We'll move on to the under eye. What I like to do is create a nice shape that works with the top liner. You want it to flow with the way that you did the top of your liner. So you don't have to connect it, but if you want to like have it tail off, it should follow that line. So it'll have a nice flow. Versus on this, I'm seeing some liner that will be completely detached and have no flow at all. I take a little, little bit of side saddle and smoke out this line down here. Take a really thin line of shadow and blow out this line. See the Aqua XL by Makeup Forever white liquid liner and pop that on the inner corner to make the shape of my eye really stand out. And then pop that right up here on the outside. Putting that spot of white on the outside corner of your eye at that perfect position will really bring up your um, new eye shape on the outside. I'm also going to take this and just emphasize the very top of my new lid just to give it a little bit of a highlight. Now I like to put a white liner on my waterline on the inside and then put a black liner on the outside so that the outside corner sort of lifts up. Do you see how this attaches to this wing that's pulling my eye up on the outside and just further adds to the whole illusion. It makes my eye appear very pointed. I bring the white all the way to the outside, sometimes it'll make my eye look like it's like dragging on the outside, so. Yes, queen! No matter what, where you are, or who you think you are, you always need to curl your eyelashes. And always wear mascara. Always. And the way that you apply your mascara is important, because you want to get just as much mascara evenly from the base of your lash all the way to the tip. Ashy eyelash root, like the bane of my existence. So really good under there. And paint your lashes black. So I'm gonna dust off this bake. Um, I'm sick and tired of looking for fancy glitter glues, so I actually just picked up some of this face and body glitter paint, and it works great for glitter glue. I'm not scared of this getting into my eye because with this thick-ass black um, liner covering my eye, it really doesn't actually even come anywhere near it. So I just like to stick, put some of that down, and then just press some of that on there. Little tip about glitter is you don't want it to have or leave any texture on your face. Like you want all the pieces of glitter to be flat to the surface. So when you apply it, really mash it down and make sure that it's not sitting jaggedly on your skin. Like when you turn, you don't want to see it like sitting weirdly on your skin. And also, Use a chunky glitter to get a better effect. If you want like a fine grain glitter, that's fine. But I feel like on the stage, it just sparkles way better, more like a diamondy glitter when you go for something a little bit chunkier. Make sure that the glitter is confined to where you want it to be. 
you just want it in one area, make sure that it's only in the one area, otherwise it's going to look messy. The part that I almost forgot to show you guys is to take this corner where your crease meets your black liner and just kind of smoke it out. It always looks a little bit better to not have a super defined like point in there. It gives the effect of a little bit of a roundness to like your fake lid that you painted on versus just having it meet into a point. I almost forgot that. Typically you would do this before you put glitter on, but I'm stoned. I want to talk about 301s. You probably heard of them. Most drag queens use them. They are fabulous and wonderful. However, they're not for everybody and we should stop using them if they don't work. Um, if your eyes are tiny, they're probably not going to work. You know, these little spikes can be cut off and you can build an eyelash that works for you. But typically this is not like a very good lash that just anybody can throw on their eye and call it a day. And my favorite is when it just hangs down like this. Oh my god. We all know this bitch. I'm going to use a 304 as a base to build a lash that works for me. And because my eyes are so small, I always have to cut them a little bit on the end. I'm just going to take a little mascara and use her to sort of clump it together because she's a little thick. I have like a nice soft lash to work off of. Take this 301 and use her little pieces individually to customize like a bigger drag lash for me. So I've been really into a lash that just has like three long points, like one in the middle, into the inside here, oops, the outside. Just cut off the pieces from a 301 and build something unique to your own eye. Of course, you can just pull them right off and reuse them over and over and over again. Sometimes I'll make the same pair of lashes last, I don't know, 20 wears, literally. I'm just going to use this blush from the Honey Palette. Life size looks quite pigmented. Pop her right up the apple of the cheek. a little bit up here just to kind of tie everything in. What I like to say about highlighter is it's not for everybody. A lot of people do not have the texture to wear highlight. It really brings out like all of your pores and not every single queen should be wearing as much highlight as they're wearing. I like to just focus it on one little area. I'll dab it on and then kind of blow it out from there. I really cannot get away with using a ton of highlight. It does not look amazing on my skin. I have to be having like a really good skin day in order for me to feel comfortable wearing it. If you're really looking for that effect, you can also throw on like a little bit of like an iridescent glitter if you're looking for like a good stage highlight. But um, yeah, not everybody has the skin for it. So throw a little bit up here. Here we're just gonna like throw it on like I see some of these bitches doing. I like to do is put a little bit on the tip and then a little bit on the bridge versus if you just had a highlight that went from here to there it would look like it went straight but this kind of appears to be elevated this appears to be elevated so this has a little bit of an illusion of it kind of having like a little slope of it. I'm gonna really draw two different nose highlights on right next to each other but I'll try I guess. I feel like on this side just see like a white line or a white exclamation point. We'll just go ahead and go for the Trixie Mattel Oh Honey lipstick. I'm just gonna put this all over. I think for my not so good side, I'll just kind of mash it all over and basically do like what I used to do with my lips, which was literally just do that until I thought that the shape looked good. <laughs> all throughout Drag Race, that's what I did. Just smeared lipstick all over my lips and mash them together like that. I'm like, oh, okay. That's a perfect oval, so I'm good. I haven't really thought that this was that important, but if you have like a really nice shape to your lips, it gives your whole face some overall uniformity. It needs a little bit of like a neutral shade to give it some depth on the outer corner since it's such a light color and I'm overdrawing so huge. You don't want to use too light of a color, too shiny of a color when you're overdrawing your lips. Otherwise, when you turn your head, you're gonna see like a big shine on where like your flat upper lip is and it kind of ruins the illusion of it being like a nice plump lip. So 
you put a little bit of a liner and ombre it, it'll give you more of a, like a 3D effect. Take a little bit of Magnificent Metals by Stilla and just pop that like right on the inside just to give it some dimension. Tell me you don't know 20 drag queens that look like this. So this is the final look. Um, as you can see, you know this bitch. You've known her a long time. She's at every fucking club you've ever been to. Her name is Sasha Lee Brooks. She loves Jägermeister and dick. And she is sweaty. She's been doing drag for eight months. She has an album that she's created on GarageBand. And she does not glue her lace. This queen is on a mental health journey. She takes time for self-care. She drinks water. She lives a healthy lifestyle. She is doing her best. She will continue to do her best. Okay, so I hope you learned a thing or two. Um, take a couple of notes, children, and try to look more like me, I guess. Uh, that's all I really have to say to you about it, so thanks. <laughs> all I want to do is this. Okay, you guys, that is all for today. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe, and let me know what kind of video you would like to see next. Don't worry, Roxanne is coming back. Um, just got to get those lips made, and the sequel will be here before you know it. But until then, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you learned a thing or two, and thank you so much for watching. And okay, that's it. <laughs>